All right, the House Judiciary Committee is taking a look at something that has been discussed for decades today, reparations. Now, activists and lawmakers alike have long considered reparations for African Americans who they say have felt the effects of institutionalized racism as a result of slavery 150 years ago. Joining us to discuss this very hot topic, we've got conservative commentator and talk radio host Steve Mulsberg and award-winning professor and editor-at-large at Salon, Dee Watkins. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us. Um, so first, I, I want to take a listen to this soundbite we've got after Danny Glover spoke before the panel today. Let's listen. Justice for black people will not flow into society merely from court decisions, nor from fountains of political oratory. Justice for black people cannot be achieved without radical changes in the structure of our society. All right, guys, first make the case for why or why not. Let's go with D first. I think it's very simple. It's just cut and dry. Um, America's only a superpower because of free labor. Um, a lot of people use this language and they talk about how, you know, when the slaves came to America, came to America, when slaves came to America, and slaves didn't come to America. These people were farmers. They were masons. They were people. <laughs> America turned them into slaves, and it's time that our country does the right thing. Steve, case. Um, slavery was horrific. It was horrible. They call it original sin. I don't disagree with any of that. Uh, however, slaves are no longer in existence. They are in Africa. They're not here. The people who were slaves are no longer here. I didn't have slaves. Why the heck should I pay a non-slave for what took place almost 200 years ago. It makes no sense. The public's against it, and it's never going to happen. Now, that, that's a good point, because a, a recent Rasmussen poll shows that Americans are definitely not in favor of that. I think we've got it here. 21% um, are actually in favor. 66% are opposed. And 13% undecided or not sure about how they feel. Uh, so many people, like you said, Steve, many people feel this is... is you know, making today's person pay for sins of the father. What do you think, Dee? I think um, how much of, how many people were um, opposed to slavery? <laughs> Why didn't their ancestors step up and be more progressive to stop that horrific institution? It's very, very easy to be against it now. It's easy to say these things now, but we have to deal with the long-term effects of what happened to this country. It's just, it's, it's not a fair thing. And we, we still see, we still see the effects of these things to this but day. How do, you, how do you relate those effects today of, of slavery? Like, what, what would you say is like something, a direct effect? African Americans are, all right, so th there's a stat list. There's a stat, okay. there's, there's, there's a stat list of any and everything that you can connect to society. And I was just start with education. White people had the opportunity to go to school 250 years before black people were able to enter classrooms. That's 250 years to build a culture of education. That's 250 years to <laughs> fall up. in love with literature. There, uh, there was a leg up there. Tremendous, tremendous leg ups. Okay, first of all, we did stand up against slavery. We were the first country to end slavery, uh, to do away with slavery within our own country. We fought a war and lost, um, lost the hundreds of thousands of people. We fought against each other to end slavery. So that's number one. Number two, um, I, 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 will, I will argue that um, not only have we you know, tried to go along the way with programs and affirmative action and civil rights legislation, et cetera, uh, throughout the many to years to, right. to try to make it right, uh, but the, 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 the big cities in this country that uh, house a lot of uh, African Americans today that are impoverished, crime-ridden, corrupt, run by Democrats for, year, for 100 years, 50 years, 60 years, Baltimore, Flint, Detroit, Chicago, Oakland, you go down, Newark, you go down the list, all run by the same Democrat culture that has kept African Americans where they are within those cities in crime-ridden, disastrous uh, a, a, a political circumstances. I think it's time that African Americans do something about that and exercise their right to vote a different way. So the reparations are not the way forward, is what you. Well, no, well, no, and we're getting off the track a little. I admit, but no, the reparations for what? So you're going to give somebody money, a, a little bit of money? What's it going to do? So, Change so, things? So let's enter, let's entertain me for a second here. L let's say that for some reason this passes, right? Reparations happens. It becomes a thing. But we already have a million and one undoable things that we can't, you know, the federal government cannot accomplish. We can't fix 
issues at the VA. There's veterans committing suicide every day, dying every day. We can't do universal college. We can't do universal health care. We can't do universal child care so our women can go back to work. Where and, and why does this take precedent, or does it, over any of these other issues? If we did have reparations, I mean, where does it fall on the line of the million and one things? So I think this country is too racist to do the right thing. And I think Steve agrees with me. Like, we already know what, we know what America is. Like, we know what America is. It's not like a, it's, it's not a shock. But at the end of the day, if we go beyond any, any complex issue, any individual city, and we just look at this, the country holistically, People were kidnapped. People were raped. People were killed. People performed hundreds and hundreds of years of free labor. Their ancestors, they, their ancestors should be compensated. Where, where, where do, but if, they, if, if this does happen, where does this fall in line? Do we, do we give health care, universal health care, like Bernie's been talking about for railing for the last decade? Or, or do we talk about college education like Elizabeth Warren is talking about? Where does this fall well, in line? Well, first of all, we, calc I, we calculate the amount of labor. And then we distribute checks <laughs> to the people who are yeah. not, didn't do exactly. the labor. But I, I, I don't know. Because I, people I, benefited from the I, labor. I don't know where you're saying I agree with you about anything you've said, and especially that we're a racist country. Where do you, where on earth do you come off saying that? that I mean, that's out, that's insane that you would sit there and say that <laughs> ne while I'm sitting here next to you. I do not agree with you. We're the most, we're the most non-racist nation in the in the in the world. We're the greatest nation in the world. And if you could find the nation that you think is less racist, then I'd like to hear about it. But so, so where where would we draw the line? Who who gets reparations? What about what about ancestors of the the Chinese railroad workers or the Chinese women who were forced into prostitution during the gold rush? Where, what about the Native Americans? Do, can they get reparations? Who, who gets reparations for sins of the father? Anyone who can make a case for it. And who, been, like, anyone, is it, who can, who is it can, a DNA can test? A, is it an Elizabeth Warren, like, I'm one one-thousandth Native American? Like, who, who gets it? No, I don't think it's that simple, but I think when we try to add, when we try to add more coals to the fire and try to make it bigger than what it is, then it's easy to distract from the topic. African Americans are descendants of people who built this country, who performed <laughs> hundreds of years of free labor, and it's the reason why so America like, was be able to come a superpower. It's would why you think America's kind of like a superpower. Like a symbolic gesture, then, because I mean, where, realistically, how do you implement that, right? Like, who, you can't. Who and there's, there's, there's different, there's different, there's different ways to do it. If you can prove that you're an ancestor of the slave, then you don't have to pay taxes ever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you never, you never had to pay taxes. And you, get, and you go to college for free. And, what and if about, you already paid for college, then all your student loans are forgiven. And what about right. the 4,000 right. free members of the African, the, the black American community that owned over 13,000 slaves, according to Henry Louis Gates Jr., writing in theroot.com in 2013? Where do they fit in? Do they get money? Do they have to pay money? Do they, what, what, what happens there? See how ridiculous this whole thing is? No, because you, you could pay in a couple thousands to millions. So, no, it's not ridiculous at all. It's definitely a, something that's drops in a bucket. Like, like, this, this drops in a bucket. Because how do you how do you execute this? I mean, you know, all these. But how do we not have how do we not have the conversation? How do we not say that people in this country have not benefited from white supremacy and the roots of such? How do we celebrate Thomas Jefferson as this president and his thinker and not talk about how this man is only able to function and be what he was because he owned over three hundred slaves? You know why this how do is we dangerous? not have that conversation? Because you have a, a, a man, a successful actor, sitting there testifying, and you have a, a black man who is president. And, and blacks being more successful now than ever, preaching to people, well, you aren't succeeding because of slavery. That's a self-defeatist uh, uh, mantra that's only going to hold people back and say, yeah, I don't, why should I go to school? Why should I try? I got money coming to me. I, why, it's, it's not, it's not uh, conducive to, to, to getting black, the black community that's in a, a problem out of it. It's going to hold them back further. Right. Money holds nobody back in a country where capitalism oh. is king. And seeing one black successful actor and one black president no, one, doesn't come mean on. that. No, you, but you just mentioned. So because Danny, he testified. Danny I Glover's, mentioned one. Danny Glover's success and Barack Obama's success doesn't translate to every black person in this country. And not every white person. But race and policies do. It's a lot to discuss. That's why we are opening the yes. discussion today. And, and let's see how Capitol Hill plays this out in the years to come. But I think it's going to be a long conversation. Uh, D. Watkins, Steve Malzberg, as always, appreciate the spirit. Talk. Thank you, Thank gentlemen. You. Thank you. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.